So today's topic is 4.5, the quotient rule. That's on pages 193 to 196 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of differentiation based on slope as a rate of change. And our lesson objectives today, there's just one, and that's to learn about and learn how to use the quotient rule for differentiation. So we won't actually derive the formula for the quotient rule this time around, um, but on pages 193 to 194, there is a proof for the quotient rule. But here's the quotient rule. If we have a function that is made up of two functions being divided by each other, then the derivative of that function is the derivative of the top multiplied by the denominator, the bottom, minus the top multiplied by the derivative of the, of the bottom. And that's all over the bottom squared. So that's just a rule that you should put on your little formula sheet. Um, you're going to be using it quite a bit um, in the upcoming lessons. So here's our example. It says find y prime if y is equal to x cubed divided by x squared minus 1. So if we're going to find y prime, which is just a derivative, what we need to do is make sure that we write this out. And as I've always suggested, um, we're going to write down the x cubed part in brackets and then put the little prime because we're going to take the derivative of that. We're going to take the derivative of the top, multiply it by the bottom, which is just x squared minus 1. And then we're going to subtract the top, which is x cubed multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. So that'll be the x squared minus one prime. And then when it's all said and done, we're just gonna take that bottom and we have to square it. So now when we're finding the derivative, the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. We still have x squared minus one. We still have x cubed here and two x there because that's the derivative of x squared minus one, which is two x. That's all over x squared minus 1 squared. So when it's all said and done, we're going to multiply the top together and combine some like terms. So we get 3x squared times x squared, which is 3x to the fourth, minus 3x squared, minus 2x to the fourth, all over x squared minus 1 squared. And that leaves us with 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth, but it's just x to the fourth, minus 3x squared, all over x squared minus 1. And one habit that you're going to want to get into is to um, take out a greatest common factor whenever you can when you're done and see if what you have left over will cancel out with uh, top and bottom. And that happens when you have rational functions. So I'm going to take out an x squared just to make sure what I have left is x squared minus 3, which doesn't cancel out with the bottom. But if it did, um, then we'd be set up to actually cancel out some of those factors. So here's our last example. It says, show that if f of x is equal to root x divided by root x minus 2, then f prime x, or the derivative of that thing, is going to be negative 1 divided by root x times root x minus 2 squared. So it's just asking us to confirm that these two things, or sorry, that f prime x is the derivative of f of x. So we're just going to take the derivative and see if we can make our derivative equal this thing. So f prime x for us is always a derivative of the top. So I'm just going to change that first off the, bat, off the bat. I'm going to change that to x to a half prime multiplied by the bottom. So that's just uh, x to the half minus 2 minus the top, which is x to the power of a half multiplied by the derivative of x to the power of a half minus 2. And that's all over x to the power of a half minus 2 squared. Oops. So. Um, we want to now find out what the derivative of this thing is. Well, the derivative of x to the power of a half is a half x to the power of negative half. So we move the exponent down and we subtract one from the exponent. And then we still have x to the power of a half here, minus two, minus x to the power of a half times the derivative of this thing. So the derivative of this thing again um, is just a half x to the power of negative half. And when we take the derivative of a constant, it's 0. And now that's still all over um, x to the power of a half minus 2 squared. So now the next thing we want to do in this case is we're going to take out a greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor that we're going to take out, um, and we did this in our first unit, um, we're going to take out a greatest common factor of a half, because there's a half here and a half here. And we're going to take out this um, x to the power of something, and in this case it's going to be to the negative half. When we're done doing that, what we have is this. Um, I took out a half and x to the power of negative half. That means I'm left with x to the power of a half minus 2. And if I took out a half and x to the negative half, 
Um, that means that I'm left with just as negative x to the power of a half. So remember when we took out a greatest common factor, when we have um, fractions, we can take out a fraction as the greatest common factor. And when we have negative exponents and fractional exponents, we always take out the exponent that has the smallest, um, the smallest exponent. So this negative half is smaller than po positive half. Okay, so we're actually very close to proving this thing, to showing that this uh, derivative is actually what we have right here. So when I am done here, I still have a half. I have x to the power of negative half. And now I have x to the power of a half minus x to the power of a half, which is just zero. And that's multiplied by negative two. Now, a half times negative two just leaves you with a negative one, which is what we're supposed to get. And this thing, x to the power of negative half, is the same thing as saying the square root of x if that square root of x was in the bottom. That's what a negative exponent means. It means you flip, you flip it to the bottom. So I get root x for this part right here in the bottom. And then I can change this back into roots. So that's another root x minus two squared. And I have just shown that um, what they had for a derivative and what we got for a derivative are the same thing. You just have to know how to manipulate it a bit. So working with fractional exponents is really important and taking that out as a greatest common factor. That's why we did it in the first unit. And, um, and then kind of just working it through and remembering what negative exponents are, that sort of stuff. So in summary, the quotient rule for derivatives allows us to find the derivative of functions that are divided by each other. Um, and that is just the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the denominator of the bottom squared. And be careful with the numerator when taking this derivative. Unlike the product rule, the order does matter. So f prime x times g of x minus f of x times g prime x is totally different than if you switch these two um, terms around. So make sure the order is uh, right. So your assignment is on pages 195 to 196 in your text. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.